This week's episode of the Going Off Podcast is brought to you by Buster and his mates. Check out their YouTube page for their two albums, Ancient Lands of Medieval Sorcery and A Poet's Dream, including songs like She'll Be My Queen and Your Love is the Cure. To advertise on the Going Off Podcast, it is a one-time $10 pledge to patreon.com slash muse. This week's episode also features a Patreon-requested album review. To request an album to be reviewed on the podcast, it is a one-time $40 pledge to either patreon.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash muse. One last thing before we get started, if anyone is wondering why the audio sounds a bit off for the first little bit, I think it's because my microphone wasn't plugged in all the way. It doesn't sound as bad as you would think, and it does get better after a while, so just bear with us. Look upon me! I will show you the life of the mind! I will show you the life of the mind! I will show you the life of the mind! It's the Going Off Podcast with Rap Critic and Muse. Muse, what is going on? Okay, so right as we're about to start recording, uh, Trump is having a press conference as we're recording this. Um, someone asked him uh, to disavow the alt-right. Oh, what did this motherfucker say now? Like, this whole weekend, it's just been like, just say Nazis are bad and we condemn them and then go the fuck away. So Trump decides to say the alt-right is bad, but there were also some very, very violent, also bad people and decides to turn it around and ask the reporter if they disavow the (laughs) alt-left and says that the alt-left are also to blame. And gets super fucking angry and uh, defensive all of a sudden. Um, Goes ahead, uh, calls them fake news um, because they're daring to ask about the alt-right. He's up there now having to defend Bannon as not a racist. Um, let me see, what else? Because there was some shit he said right before we fucking started. This is fucking classic whataboutism. He, He was justifying the rally in Charlottesville as a protest to save the Robert E. Lee statue, saying that that was the only reason they were there. And then decides to say, I know it's Robert E. Lee now. I know it's Stonewall Jackson next. I mean, what's next? George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, where's this gonna go? He's fucking clueless. He's either fucking clueless, or he knows what the hell he's saying, and he's a goddamn racist. Which we already know is fucking true, because he's a goddamn racist. Well, like I said, uh, amongst all this shit of him, like, "Mm, not really wanting to say, uh, or or every time he does, it goes, oh, we're both sides. Uh, Keep in mind, this is the same dude that had a copy of Hitler's speeches at his bedside for a long time, according to one of his ex-wives. And he did not, and, and it's not one of those, oh, people just starting to spread rumors about Donald Trump. No, that was a thing in, like, articles, like, two years ago, and he admitted to it. He was like, oh, yeah, a Jewish friend gave it to me. And then the dude, his name was David or something like that, and he's like, I am in no way Jewish. I don't know why he said that. <laughs> so, yes, p- please, people, do not be surprised. And if you're being surprised, then fucking listen. It's like the girl that uh, died, uh, Heather Heather Hare, I think her, her name was. It's like the girl that fucking died said, uh, her last quote, I believe, on her Twitter before she died, if you're not angry, you're not fucking paying attention, people. So he goes ahead and says that there are some very bad people on both sides, but there were also some very fine people on both sides. Oh, sh- get the fuck out of here! He's put on the spot like this, and he has to say something, and he knows that whatever he says isn't going to be good enough because he's so fucking dumb, and he doesn't know how to answer the question. A simple, neo-Nazis are terrible. Every he other Republican... He can't say it! He really Every other Republican who is put in office by not pandering to the alt-right and neo-Nazis and white supremacist terrorists, they have no problem. Just straight up. Marco Rubio, even. We've set the bar so goddamn low now that we're praising Marco Rubio for stating the goddamn obvious. (laughs) But Trump is the only one, the only one currently in office who who was put there. Let's not even fucking bring the goddamn Russia shit into equation. He was put into office because he pandered to the racist alt-right. And now he has a job. He has duties to fulfill. He has promises and commitments to see to. And he it pains him. You can tell it does because of how defensive he gets. People ask him about it and he's like, I already said, I already said. I love how we can't just lie. 
I love how he can't just say, you know what? We do condemn uh, neo-Nazis and all right. He can't even lie about it. <laughs> he has to do the... You know what I mean? Like, lie to us, man. Lie, that's, he has no I, problem lying. Yeah, exactly. There's no problem lying. But he has a bigger prop. He has no problem lying, but he has a huge problem with admitting he's wrong, um, acknowledging when he's fucked up, apologizing for anything, and he sees this as admitting that he's wrong, because he's straight up saying, my fan base is made up of deplorables. And I have to come out here and say that my fan base is deplorable. How are you going to say that these people don't represent you when they were dressed like you, exactly like you, every fucking weekend weekend when you're on the goddamn golf course? (laughs) There are people out there with white button-down shirts, khaki pants, and MAGA hats. The exact same shit you wear every weekend you are playing golf. Chanting, Heil Trump. How can you seriously stand up there and not see, <clears throat> not see, that people <laughs> would obviously equate the two? And that's why you have to take pains, especially as the, represent, uh, as the president representing all of us, to be like, let me be clear. Why do you think Obama kept fucking saying shit like that? Let me be clear. <laughs> we are not for this shit. When you do that both sides, what about ism bullshit, stop. We're seeing through that now. People are having a lot more media literacy. And we're able to see when you are basically trying to do everything you can to not look like a Nazi sympathizer. Like, like, oh, I mean, you know, both sides could, could have done something. Yeah, both sides didn't, like I said, both sides didn't kill nobody. At that rally. Someone specifically did that. Someone specifically wants to go back to a time where they didn't have to think about the, the, the feelings and ideas and, and uh, struggles of minorities. That's a very specific group of people. How is it this hard to disavow... Uh, to, 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 um, is disavow the word I'm, I'm thinking of? Yeah, to disavow them. How, the fact that it's that hard is telling you everything you need to know. The fact that he feels the need to keep saying, ah, 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 both sides, both sides, ha ha. It's like, yeah, are, what about, are, it's like, it's like there, is a, there is a group of people that want to kill black people, that want to exterminate Jewish people. Do you say that you don't like them? Oh, well, you know, there's both sides that could be doing it. It's such bullshit. It's like, it's like Jesus Christ. And, and you know, I know that there are people out there that are like, well, you know what? There are uh, Antifa, right? Like, they're, they're a thing, huh? And and you know the fucking, like, the president and all these people, they really want Antifa to do something violent, like, in the, in, like you know what I mean? They really wish that Antifa had did, done something violent in the last couple of days. So they could say, aha! Both sides! Aha! And you know it's bad because uh, one of the defenders of him that I saw was going like, Oh, well, what about uh, uh, 39 dead in Chicago last week? Aha! Aha! And I was like, what are, what are you talking about? That has nothing to do with anything. People die all the time. Like, fucking, oh, 18 dead in China last week? Aha! Aha! Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Unless your point is, but see, black people kill people sometimes. I mean, that's what he means when he says Chicago. You know what I mean? Because we all know about, all oh, the high murder rate in Chicago and shit. So when he said, oh, 39 dead in Chicago, oh, no one's saying anything. Because it doesn't have any fucking thing to do with it, you dumb piece of shit. <laughs> it's, it's not like, if it was like, oh, BLM, uh, uh, Black Lives Matter uh, activists ran over people in a car or, or they killed 39 people last week. I'd be like, holy shit. What the fuck is going on with Black Lives Matter? Like, this is insanity. But that's not happening. <laughs> and and you see them desperately grasping at straws. And like I said, it doesn't, the uh, what about is and bullshit doesn't work because there's nothing that's recently happened concerning Antifa or, or anti fascists or whatever. The only thing I've heard about them was I think they punched Nazi McFist in his ear. And um, I think they, they broke a whole bunch of glass. But uh, as far as I've seen, they haven't, like, assaulted anybody. There hasn't been, like, a full-on assault on anybody. If uh, there's something I'm missing, please let me know. But that's besides the point. If that happens, then please come out and be like, you know, I- I've seen uh, guys like Chank Uger. He's like, hey, you know, these people call themselves leftists, but they're more like anarchists. And I openly say I don't associate with them because I do not, I-, I just don't believe in violence in any capacity. I don't believe that that's a good idea. You know what I mean? 
Meanwhile, the fucking president of the United States, his Republicans, conservatives, these guys are your base. Come on, man. But like I said, you know he's not going to do it. But it's so funny to watch the video where he has to go, like I said, I, I condemn in the strongest terms the, the Antifa on both sides. And, and what's really funny is that like to say the phrase, I strongly condemn or I condemn in the strongest terms. Ironically, it's not really a strong term to say I condemn in the strongest terms. No, like I said, I said on my Twitter, when he was coming at North Korea, it was, we will rain down fucking fire and fury upon the heads of North Korea if they decide to fucking fuck with us. You know what I mean? That's the strongest terms when you actually say some shit. Not saying that I condemn something very strongly. Like, you know, that's not a strong term. Prove it. Trump was on stage being asked questions about the violence from the alt-right, and he goes, you define alt-right to me. All of a sudden, he's a fucking kid being like, oh yeah, well what does it mean to you? You tell me what it means. Tell me what it means. And the person goes, well, uh, John McCain defined it as, then Trump again, because he can't just let shit go, goes, oh, you mean uh, Senator John McCain who uh, who uh, voted against our uh, Obamacare repeal? <laughs> And the person was like, John McCain said, no, 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 I'm just trying to clarify. Are we st- are we talking about the same John McCain who oh voted my against God. my Obamacare repeal? And they're like, yes. And he just goes, oh, okay. And immediately puts on the face like, I'm not goddamn listening. He's a fucking child. <laughs> he then fucking turns it around and says, well, what about the, le- the alt-right? There were people swinging clubs, you know, let's not act like everyone was innocent there. Yeah, the difference is, these fucking people were defending themselves. Yeah. (laughs) You would be crazy to go to Charlottesville Sunday morning after the pictures of what the rally looked like on Saturday and not bring something to defend yourself. A a black man, I forget his name, and I hate that I forget his name. He's alive, thank goodness. He was savagely beaten by four or five white, white supremacists wearing MAGA hats, mind you, again, there is no separation. These are Trump's thugs. This is his foot army. You can at least say anyone who's doing it in my name, I don't, I'm not standing for it. That would be the easiest goddamn thing in the world to say. And he doesn't even have to mean it. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's like, you know you can say things that you don't mean, right? Like, <laughs> you know that's an option, right? <laughs> I just saw a tweet from Nash that I wanted to read because this goes back to what we were talking about, about the, the Republicans who... They put him in office, so they're not innocent, but now they're tied to this fucking disaster train. He says, um, we're all seeing Trump meltdown on live TV, but the GOP is seeing their, is seeing their legislative agenda collapse in real time. How can any Democrat running in 2020, running against a Republican candidate who supported Trump in any capacity, not just have their campaign videos showing a montage of insane shit Trump has said, over the past 100 to 200 days and not just say, yeah, my my opponent supports this guy. All of that stuff, and then at the end, just show a picture of like, no, just show like you, you know, the guy who's running, looking at the camera and being like, so, so we're gonna, we're gonna have, you want that for four more years? (laughs) You know what I mean? Just show a montage of crazy Trump shit and then show a picture of that guy you're running against standing next to Trump for a photo op. Dr. Cornell West, he had said that a bunch of Antifa guys, they protected clergy from being crushed by white nationalists on Friday in uh, Charlottesville. You see an actual act of kindness that was done by a specific group of people. Like, like, like say what you want about their ideologies and anarchism and all that stuff. Like, I, I, I don't really kind of like, you know, fuck with that either. But at the same time, these guys, the people that you call the, um, the Antifa or whatever the fuck, they were actively protecting clergymen, and they get no love whatsoever. And please look it up yourself. Cornell West and Reverend Tracy Blackman. They were apparently almost trapped by torch-wielding Nazis. Which just goes to show, no, they weren't there to peacefully, quietly protest in protection of a Robert E. Lee statue. Th- th- this isn't just the one. This is all, and this isn't about heritage, by the way. Our governor, Roy Cooper, said, um... You know, what happened in Charlottesville is horrible. We need to disavow racism in all its forms. But there are better ways to remove the statues than what happened uh, last night. There was a group of uh, people who forcefully removed a Confederate statue in Durham, North Carolina. We'll get to that in a second here. 
but the comments from All White, of course, don't remove it because it's my heritage. You're removing parts of history. See, here's the thing that's really important to note. Besides the fact that you are at the same time defending what neo-Nazi white supremacist terrorists were defending in Charlottesville, to you, these statues are history and heritage. Whatever that heritage may be. I know I've seen flags that say heritage, not hate. Unfortunately, I hate to break it to you, your heritage is hate. That's what it's based on. But to these people, these statues mean way more. And that's what these people need to understand. To them, it isn't about history and heritage. They could give less of a shit about the history and the heritage. I've seen people posting pictures of people and the flags they were flying. In Charlottesville, these Nazis were waving Confederate flags, Nazi flags, you saw some don't tread on me flags, and you even saw some thin uh, blue line flags, which draw any connection you want there. You did not see these same people, Nazi, flying American flags, USA red, white, and blue flags. You did not see those very much because this is not about American pride. This is about white pride. This is about white supremacy, and that's it. Can we be completely clear? The fucking Confederacy are a bunch of goddamn traitors. They don't deserve any fucking respect. They decided that owning people was more important than being a unified front against other countries that wanted to fuck with America. So no, fuck them. Confederates do not get to be, oh, a uh, part of American history. No, they're not. They're part of traitors who wanted to be, who would rather be apart from the country that could help them than not own fucking people. The Civil War is, in my opinion, the darkest spot in American history. It's... It shows the worst side of us. Not even before our first centennial, we were at war with ourselves over owning slaves. That's what was important. That was what turned, quote unquote, brother against brother. You always hear that. I don't know why they try to romanticize the Civil War by making it sound like some fucking Lifetime movie. It was brother against brother. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. <laughs> the Civil War is just one in a line. I'm not, by saying that the Civil War was the darkest point in American history, I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm not trying to shit on the taking away, the stealing of Native American land. I'm not trying to shit on the Japanese internment camps. I'm not trying to shit on the bombing of, of uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and all the horrible shit that America has done throughout the years. But if you had to ask me what the number one most, like, embarrassing the other things are shameful this one is embarrassing because it made us look like we didn't know what the fuck we were doing and we still haven't moved past it because people still want to cherish these monuments and what the fuck do they stand for honestly i asked these people if they took these statues away and didn't tell you would you notice When's the last time you even fucking went to one of these goddamn things? Yeah, it's not like people walk by them every day and fucking salute, you know? <laughs> the, the only people I see doing that shit are fucking white supremacists. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of that, the one guy who has tons of pictures posing with these uh, Confederate uh, generals and leaders, but like his arm around them. He was one of these guys who was at the rally on Charlottesville, spouting horrible hate rhetoric. He was disowned from his family. They said, you scare us, we want nothing to do with you, you've gone down this horrible path of this hatred, and they blame it on the fucking shit on the internet. They don't, they don't name names. But if you were to ask me, you could easily draw this shit back to fucking hate mongers like Alex Jones and Rush Limbaugh, because they are the gateway drug to this shit. They are the dog whistle that gets people into reading the Stormer. Thank God GoDaddy and Google banned the fucking Stormer, as seen on Patreon, off their fucking browsers, because there's no room for that shit. There's no room for fucking hate speech. And I know people are gonna be like, ah, Muse, remember your, uh, your fucking catchphrase used to be expressing my freedom of speech, whether you like it or not. Well, you know what? There's a fucking exclusion. Other countries have rules against hate speech, and we should too. I guarantee you the people that are saying that are not the people that it is aimed at. For the people that are saying that, these ideas are just ideas. They're not realities 
for certain people. The reality is that someone saying that means taking away the autonomy, means uh, advocating for the death and removal of Jewish people, of black people, of, of uh, di all types of different ethnicities. And like I said, you know, a, a lot of them say, like, oh, well, we're not advocating for, like, you know, an evil removal. No, we're just, we're just advocating for the idea that, you know, it would be a good idea if these uh, people were separate, you know. And, but then the ne next logical question is, well, how would you separate them? How would you separate them? Because it's not like in the 60s people were just like, oh, hey, you know, I've just decided to not be, not to go to your restaurant. No, it was, you can't come to my fucking restaurant. Right. You know what I mean? And if you decide to, we're dragging you out. So what happens when people decide to, when people are fucking friends and they're like, you know what? You're my friend. You're, you're my white friend. You're my black friend. I don't give a fuck. I'm taking you over here because we're fucking friends. What happens with that? You have to say, oh, no, we have to enforce these rules. And then even go back then, like, you know what's really funny about the, the division that happened back then? It was a one-way street, honestly. Black people couldn't go into white neighborhoods and couldn't go to white anything. But white people could go to black clubs. White people could go to black, you know what I mean? White people could drink from the black water fountain if they wanted to do. Emmett Till's memorial sign. Yeah. Have, have you heard about this? It's been riddled with bullet holes. Yeah. A lot. And see, here's here, here's a question. Because that that is also American history. Wh whether people want to, you know, ignore that and act like it never happened. It's a lot like these, these Civil War memorials these confederate statues the one that was torn down by protesters in durham was about a hundred years old most of these statues if not all of them they were built long after the civil war after after the reconstruction they weren't put there to honor the civil war and the and the ones who lost they are standing living testaments to white supremacy and racism that's all they're there for. What are the reason could you possibly think of? I was like, oh, well, you know, it's there. Like you said earlier, it was treason. They were traitors. They took arms against the country to, to overthrow the government. If people did that today, you would call them violent thugs. It would be like if after the American Revolution, they put up a uh, statue in honor of Benedict Arnold. Yeah. It wouldn't make any fucking sense. But, uh, 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 but, but come on, he, he was a war hero. He actually did great things for our country for a really long time. You can't take that statue down. Yeah, but you know what? The climate of the time after the American World War where it's like, hey, we're trying to be our own independent nation. Fuck no, I'm not putting up a goddamn uh, monument to Benedict Arnold. He can go fuck right the fuck off. Why are there no statues of Hitler in Germany if it's part of their culture and part of their history? Because I mean, it is part fucking, of their culture, right? They are ashamed of it. <laughs> Rightfully so. They are extremely vocal about it. A man was in, what was it, Belgium a couple days ago and fucking did a Nazi salute and got a fucking fist in his face for it. You don't do that shit. They don't have any, they have zero tolerance. I think he's in jail on bond or something like that. They have zero tolerance for that shit. Because, because they saw how the reality manifested to their own countries, two countries surrounded to them, uh, surrounding them. But the problem with America is... All of the bad things that happened concerning why we fought over uh, slavery didn't happen to white people. It happened to black people. And so it's just like, well, I mean, uh, it, uh, it's, well, you know, it's all about perspective. It's like, yeah, but see, your perspective is someone who didn't have to deal with the realities of what slavery was. Because like I said, it's not American history, technically. Like, if the Confederacy was still a thing, yeah, that would be their history, but they are traitors to our country. So, no, we shouldn't be calling them, oh, look at this great American history. Yeah, history of traitors. <laughs> that would be like going to an African-American museum and be like, oh, look at this slave master. It's like, well, he was a horrible person. Yeah, but, you know, see, if, he, if we didn't have him, we wouldn't have the black people in America. Yeah, but he's a horrible person. Don't put up a fucking monument to him. And like I said, you can have all these things. Put them in a fucking museum. Where people will go to see them and be like, oh, this is what uh, uh, people of the time were, uh, you know, w uh, trying to bargain in order to, you know. Because that, that's basically all this bullshit was. It was like, okay, you can bring those carpetbaggers down here and tell us to do this and the third, but we have to get this in return. That's what all, all this shit was. All these monuments and stuff like that. They were all in uh, um, the ways that certain things are written in our history books where it's like, 
oh, uh, well, you know, slavery was kind of bad, but it was mostly over the state, right? All of that shit are all compromises that completely un, um, unobjective uh, parents and, and teachers and just white people that were really fucking sour about how badly they lost the war, compromises that they fought for in order to still be like, yeah, but, you know, you know. I mean, we you know, we should uh, we should have won, you know. Bringing up the textbooks because that was another thing that came up. People were like, well, if you're going to get rid of our monuments, you might as well burn our history books too. Yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. That shit is horribly inaccurate. Fucking print up new ones that are actually <laughs> that aren't full of fucking bullshit. We can easily print new ones. And uh, there was another thing I had to point out because I'm sure the people who are bitching and whining about the about the Confederate uh, statue being torn down in Durham aren't giving a shit about the fact that a man only about a half hour ago spray painted "fuck Islam" on one of the pillars of the Lincoln Memorial. That's not even like related. Like, what the fuck? If we're gonna talk about vandalizing and defacing government uh, monuments, yeah, how about that? Bet you won't hear a fucking peep out of these fucking white supremacists out of this shit. These these closeted white supremacists, by the way. I'm talking about your everyday people who don't want to admit they're fucking racist, but are just as fucking racist. There's a lot of people responding to the uh, to the press conference at Trump Tower, by the way. I didn't even realize that's where he was being held. I guess that's where he feels the most comfortable spouting out this inane rhetoric. But you see John Kelly who was named uh, Chief of Staff just recently. The photo of him is going viral. He looks so ashamed to be listening to the babbling, the rambling Trump is doing, and the media spin. And I'm not even talking about the, you know, the mainstream media. I'm not talking about CNN, MSNBC. Fox News correspondents are calling it a mess. <laughs> the biggest mess I've ever seen. I don't know if that was real. Actual quote from a Fox News host four minutes ago. He really said, I don't know if that was real. <laughs> I don't even know if that was real. That was the biggest mess I've ever seen. <laughs> He's losing his fucking fan base, and don't even, don't even give me the links that CNN and MSNBC and all these sites that really should know better, that, you know, are all about investigative journalism, are posting all these headlines about, you know, we spoke to these people in the Rust Belt, and they're <laughs> yeah. still rowdy rowdy. I don't give a fuck what they are and what they think about this shit. You know, if you're living out in the Rust Belt, if you're living out in the Midwest... And you're talking about, well, you know, Trump's going to bring jobs and Trump's going to do all this shit. You know why you're so brave and saying all that shit? Because you know no one's going to fucking bomb out there. <laughs> if you're living in California, if you're living in New York, you're scared shitless that Trump is going on TV calling out North Korea. Because those are going to be where they fucking bomb. No one is going to bomb North Dakota. But I just wanted to say, in closing, with the whole statue in Durham, if you live in a state that has confederate statues of any kind statues memorials plaques anything that represents or celebrates in any way romanticizes um the confederacy confederate generals those who fought on the confederate side in favor of slavery against the american government yes call your governor because I've called mine and the secretary I spoke to informed me that they have received numerous calls on the matter just over the past week the terrorist act in Charlottesville absolutely horrible there's absolutely no way you can say that it wasn't terrorism Trump's up there saying well some say it's murder some say it's terrorism you know whoever's right I'm, I'm siding with them is basically what he said because he doesn't want to straight up call it uh, terrorism because he's a fucking asshole and a coward change is coming from this and I've seen people say that the one person that was murdered hasn't scared off the resistance group hasn't scared off those who are against fascism, those who are against Nazis and white supremacists. The people that are afraid are the white supremacists. If you saw the photo shared from the founder of Hatreon on Twitter this morning, he just shared it as is. 
and the comments underneath it, people going, oh yeah, great job, you toppled a statue, what's that gonna change? Oh yeah, that's just symbolism, that isn't gonna really change anything. Yeah, they might think that. You know who really, really cares about that though? The white supremacists. Right under that, he posted a comment, dude, we're really in trouble out here. So if you're one of these casual racists who doesn't see any big deal about it, that's fine. That's you or whatever. These people are literally shitting themselves because this is all they fucking have. And they're that sad and pathetic that they dare call any, quote, libtards snowflakes because they're afraid of losing their universal health care. Meanwhile, a couple statues get torn down. They're fucking crying in their beer. White supremacists and racists who are clinging to any semblance of when they had any sort of power. And they say we will not be replaced. Check it out. You're being fucking replaced, pal. It's <laughs> happening. It's happening this week because of that shit show you decided to put on. And here's my thing. Here's my thing. All the, because I do believe that most white people in this country are, are good people. I believe most people are good people, right? I think what happened in this past election was definitely a result of misinformation. And a lot of people were still kind of going like, uh, you know, a lot of people like to root for the underdog, right? They like to be like, you know, I'm going for this guy because I feel like the news has told me that he's the bad guy. But I can see when I watch the speeches that he's really trying to go for this. He speaks to the American thing. Now we're seeing the reality of what someone like this has to do in order to to stay in power, in order to feel that they are in positions of power, in order to in order to get this shit done. And I think a lot of people, especially Trump voters, people like to say, "Oh, it's not that many Trump voters." I guarantee you, especially after this weekend, when people are saying, "Wait, this is what I have to associate with in order to get these things that that this politician promised me." No, no, I don't. I don't want this. A lot of people are having that moment, and they're going to continue to have that moment as time unravels. And what's funny is, it's because these neo-Nazis thought that everybody wanted this shit. They thought that the majority of white people really just wanted this, or if they didn't, they weren't going to say anything. You know what I mean? But now we're seeing that they're like, you know, especially white people are going like, no, we don't want that. Wait a minute. Fuck this. <laughs> we didn't want this. Or, or, or and, and all the people who were like complacent and thought that it didn't matter. They were like, wait a minute. No, this fucking matters. What the fuck am I doing? Why am I not saying anything about this? You know? So please, neo-Nazis, please keep coming forward. Please keep showing how horrible you are. So that we can prove beyond the shadow of a doubt. So beyond any of the murky sort of trying to equivocate both sides bullshit. Please keep coming out and just acting an ass. So people can come back with full force and show you what our, our American country can be. Show you how great we can be. I just want to you ask know? you, if you're listening to this show <sighs> and you're a Trump supporter and you somehow made it this far into the episode, I'm really surprised if you did. And after refusing to disavow white supremacy, the KKK, all that the first time, having to be forced to... And even now, when he's asked about it again, he's getting defensive, he knows how bad this makes him look at his core base. Take a look in the mirror and ask yourself, what is it going to take? How far is too far? Because at this point, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. If you're a Trump supporter, I equate you with the racists and the Nazis and the white supremacist terrorists because you've done nothing to separate yourselves. I'm done acting as if everyone that not everyone that voted for Trump is as bad as the worst of them. But honestly, if you're not willing to speak out against the worst of them, you're just as bad. A racist who is uh, someone who is okay with racism is just as bad as the actual racist in my opinion. Well, like I said, all it takes for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. You know, and and it's like uh, what someone said uh, is like he's not saying that you're a racist if you voted for him, but racism wasn't a, a deal breaker for you is the problem. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like ask yourself, why wasn't racism? Why wasn't sexism? Why wasn't that a deal breaker for you? You know, I'm not saying you are racist, but think about why that is. I'm saying there's a chance it might be, though. <laughs> Just saying. Right, Let's you you might album. not know it, but it's there. <laughs> yeah, Patreon requested album review. Vessel, Twenty One Pilots. 
This uh, vessel by 21 Pilots was requested by Michael Castleman. And if you'd like to request something, then, you know, you know what to do. Go to our Patreons, hit us up, get other exclusive stuff. It's all fun. Neither of us are strangers to 21 Pilots. I don't think anyone c- could be if you have listened to hit radio of any kind for the past couple of years because they have been all over it with a, with a couple big tracks. Heathens was all over the world. That was a fucking banger. Heathens was huge. Ride still gets a lot of radio play around here. Stressed Out, huge hit. Yeah, I reviewed it. But this is the album that came out before it. We're not yeah, talking about the album with any of the hits, except for <laughs> Car Radio. Car Radio was, was yeah. kind of a... I don't know, I heard people talking about it. I never heard it on the radio, yeah. though. Yeah. yeah. It was but, a thing. Ironically, I never heard Car Radio on the radio. Um, yeah, how about that? <laughs> no, I find it funny. It's like, it's interesting that the things that people request. Because like I said, 21 Pilots. Oh, I know what you want me to review. You want me to review the blurry... Fo- oh, the, the other one? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I love that they just assume, like, you've heard that one. I know you've heard that one. Listen to this one. It's like, no, I haven't. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I find that fascinating. People always, like, ask for, like, the other thing that people don't know as well whenever they're requesting things. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. Like, that, those are the most likely the type of people to request things. The people more likely to request things are the people who are, like, they aren't like, hey, request this thing that everyone's been, uh, everyone's been talking about. They're like, no, request... Here's the thing that not as many people have been talking about. You know, hey, uh, tell, me what, tell me what you got to say about that, you know? I hate to um, interrupt. I hate to interrupt, mm-hmm. but um, our governor, Roy Cooper, um, just posted on Facebook, um, it's time to move forward. These monuments should come down. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> God, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh fuck all these people who are so mad. Fuck 'em. It has been said. It has been written. <laughs> oh, mm, sorry. I had to get that out of my system. I was shaking. I was so fucking happy that I was reading that. And I was listening to you, trust me, but I just happened to see that and my eyes just like bugged out of my fucking head. <laughs> Woo. Uh, so yeah, um, Vessel by 21 Pilots. Rap Critic, my dear, dear, dear friend. What did you think? So, I find this very interesting. Uh, it's definitely earned the title of emo rap, which is what I've heard a lot of people refer to it as. Now, that's not a bad thing. I just find it interesting that, like, I've heard, like, other sort of, like, emo stuff, and I kind of don't like it. And this was kind of like, huh, all right, I can see how this works. And I think part of that is because, first of all, this guy's very talented. He uh, plays multiple instruments, uh, including the ukulele, which is <laughs> which shows up on this album, and it actually, like, feels, it doesn't feel out of place. He's just like, oh, all right, <laughs> got a ukulele here. Okay, that's, that's fine. Uh, in House of Gold. Uh, where he, so, you know, uh, now the one thing I will say that I don't like is sometimes his voice can be a little whiny, and I feel like that's definitely improved with uh, the latest singles that he's put out. They sound a lot more, uh, you know, full. Um, but there are there are a couple of moments on here where he does the sort of, uh, who's, that, who's that guy? Remember that Yak plus Johnny Five with the onomatopoeia? From Flowbots, right. Yeah, he kind of has that sort of like, I, I I just started rapping recently, and it's sort of like, I, I, I know that it's impressive to speed rap, so I'm going to speed rap, but I'm not really that good at speed rapping. <laughs> so, like, there's a lot of moments like that where it's just kind of like, all right, I, it, it, which kind of tarnishes the replay value for a lot of songs. But, but um, the very first song, Ode to Sleep, it, when I first heard it, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. I was like, this is this sucks. I don't want to listen to this again. <laughs> but then it's like, we had to listen to it twice. And then, you know, that's when I go on Genius. I start reading. I was like, oh, it's supposed to be like night and day. 
And so, like, when it's darker sounding, that's the nighttime when he's, you know, in the terror and all that. And the next day is when he, when the sun comes out and it's brighter and I can stand up to my fears and I kick them out. And, you know, I was like, that's really inventive. Like, I've never thought about making a song like that. Like, wow, that's really fucking cool. Um, and then he has some lyrics where he's like, uh, tie a noose around you on holding on to you. Uh, tie a noose around your mind, loose enough to breathe fine and tie it to a tree and tell it you belong to me. This ain't a noose, this is a leash. I have some news for you. You must obey me. And I was like, that's really cool. Like, to sort of switch around the, the, the suicidal imagery to be about ownership over your depression. It's like, that's really smart, you know? Um, and uh, you have songs like um, House of Gold, which, once again, I like. It's sort of like a dedication to his mom. And how he's gonna build our house of gold and, you know, all that cool stuff. And then, of course, you have uh, Car Radio. I know I didn't really analyze that as well because I just realized I didn't put any lyrics down. Uh, <laughs> but I do remember really liking it, so it's a solid song. Um, and there's Car Radio, of course, where, which is about someone stealing his car radio and how he has to, when he's driving, like, to work or, or, or to classes now, like, all he can, all he has are his, you know, thoughts you know, and, and it's kind of fascinating. It's like, yeah, we listen to music to sort of drown out um, um, sort of, uh, uh, you know, darker thoughts and things like that. And, you know, when you're at home, hey, you can have a movie on. You can be listening to music. You can be doing anything. You can be playing video games. But when you're on that, you know, way to work, the only thing that can distract you is music. And now you don't have that anymore. All you have is silence. And so it's like, now I, I'm forced to, to, to grapple with things while I'm on my way to work. You know what I mean? And I, I thought that was a really smart joint. Um, <clears throat> and then we had songs like uh, Fake You Out that I really enjoyed. G guns for Hands, at first, I thought was kind of silly. It's like, it looks like you all have guns for hands. It's like, yeah, Guns for Hands was the one that, 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 that kind of took me off guard because, yeah, at first it sounded a little silly, but it was one of those songs where if... I mean, I'm sure it has deeper meaning than you would assume, but it was easily look passable. Like a lot of the songs on here, and I don't mean to cut you off, but I oh, I just wanted to go ahead and say, I love hip hop, I love indie rock. This album has a really good mix of both, um, and it was really enjoyable. I had a lot of fun listening to it because it played to a lot of different interests of mine musically. Like, it wasn't just your typical indie rock. It had different types of facets. It had different instrumentation. Didn't It didn't just sound like one band on here, except for the fact that, you know, the, the same vocalists. But musically, it sounded like a good mix. But I got to echo what you said before about the replayability. While it was really fun, while it was a really good listen, um, it didn't really stick with me that much. Like... A lot of it just kind of ran together for the most part to the point where, like, like, like I said, while it, musically it sounds different, a lot of the same tropes are there. Yeah, th th there's a sort of, like, it sounds oddly happy even though it's talking about something dark. Yeah, th there's a lot of that. There was one song with the whistling where I was like, all right, that's too happy for what you're talking, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, <laughs> and I, I know if you've listened to the songs on the radio, you know they scream sometimes. You don't know exactly how much they scream until you listen to <laughs> Vessels. Because boy, oh boy, there's a lot of screaming on here. And I'm not saying that I hated the screaming. I'm okay with the screaming. It's fine. I didn't love the screaming, though. It, it, in small doses, it's okay. Um, I've noticed that in days of yore, uh, if you went into a hot topic, uh, the walls would be covered in My Chemical Romance shirts. I remember that, yeah. These days it's more twenty one pilots and it's if you, li pilots. That's if so you true. listen to vessels, yeah, it's not hard to see why. Definitely. And I'm not even gonna say that th I'm not saying that these bands are similar, because I really don't think they are. Mm -hmm. Um musically absolutely not. Uh lyric lyrics wise, my chemical romance is definitely more impressive in the lyric department. Um Really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think uh, you know what I I find uh good about this album is it never feels exploitative. Like if there's You're something right, that it I, doesn't. If there's something that I don't like, 
uh, on this album, it's not because I don't like what he's saying. You know, it, it's just like, there's never a point where there's just like, dude, what you're saying here is just fucking stupid. There's never like a full point of that. It's just because a lot of it is about <clears throat> suicide, depression, and it's like, it's really noble to sort of take on these topics. And it's already really hard just to try to talk about it. And I think he handles it in so many in so many ways that is it, that's admirable. That doesn't necessarily mean I enjoy them all is the problem, you know? And so it's like, all right, there's one hand where it's like, I understand how this is important. And I understand how this really reaches a certain audience, especially like high school. Like if you're a high schooler, like I can understand how this would be your fucking, uh, you know, this would be your uh, uh, your demon days for me back in the day. You know what I mean? It was just like, this speaks to me, man. I just feel this. You know, like, I could see that for you. But uh, I just personally feel like there's a lot of moments that are very, uh, that, that don't feel hammered out enough. Just from a technical standpoint. And not just like, oh, well, it needs to do this. No, it's just like, just for me to enjoy it. I just don't like certain things that happen, you know, especially concerning his voice, especially concerning his flow, um, and concerning some of the instrumentation. Like I said, and, and it's good that he experiments, and there are a lot of points that I do like on here, but, I mean, when you experiment, you're bound to fail at some points. So that's just what's gonna happen. And it all just kind of depends on whether or not someone's, if you've built up the, uh, the, 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 not, not the stamina, but the, the charisma, and the, the, the sort of points with your audience that they'll rock with you through it and i just i didn't rock through it uh, rock with him through it the whole way because of some points but that's not to take it down because i still feel like it's it, it's ambitious and so i do give it points for going where it does go i just feel like it didn't um fully not not impress because it's not about impressing me but it, it didn't pull me fully in this didn't feel exploitative in the way that some white rappers kind of tend to do in a racial sense if that makes any sense like i don't think anyone's gonna listen to this and be like these white boys are destroying the hip-hop <laughs> genre you know because they're really not they're not stealing it they're they're borrowing some of these elements and making it a, a totally different thing i don't think there's any songs on this album that i would consider purely a hip-hop song yeah, that's that's true. They're all a mix of hip hop and indie rock to occasional hard rock. Maybe most of it's like, on the lighter side. Yeah, it's a bit of like dubstep, sort of like you know what I mean. It is a very like interesting EDM. blend. Yeah, yeah. I think there's something on here that most people would find something that they enjoy. But yeah, I'm with you in the fact that like the whole way through. Eh, there, there were definitely some some weaker points, and even the stronger songs weren't strong enough for me to really want to revisit. For the most yeah. part, I think they definitely grew from here uh, in their songwriting. Their newer singles are far catchier, if that's what they were going for. Um, I, I assume you would want to make better music as you go i think that's the point of most artists is yeah, to improve if, if they got worse then, then that would be bad <laughs> sure but i don't know if the the catchy pop thing was you know their goal or if that just kind of happened but um i think this is a good starting point um i know this isn't their first album and i'm curious what that sounds like the other album that i saw was like from 2011 and a lot of the songs were the same so oh the same. What the fuck? Like, how does that work? I'm guessing it was like a demo. I guess I guess they just fleshed it out for Vessels. So I'm sure a lot of the tracks they'd done before was, you know, probably a local favorite. You know, spread around the shows. You know, the album you sell at the merch table when, it, when you're doing the local indie sets. And, uh, you know, wh when you make it big, most times those songs that people are familiar with are the songs you go with on your debut. And that's, uh, that's what they wound it up doing here and it did relatively well i'm looking at the ratings most of it's like four out of five four and a half out of five i don't know if i would go that far but yeah, um, i'm right on the edge of glory I, 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 <laughs> really uh but i, I like a 3.9 like like it's right there you know it just needs just those inspired moments to just take it over um, that I would put it in the sort of like, yeah, go out and cop it. 
I would agree. 3.75 was the rating that was going through my head most uh, when I was listening to it. Because I wouldn't consider any of it to be bad. You know? it's None of it's bad, I wouldn't say. But there's, defi- there's definitely some points that hit stronger than others. More Some songs that are catchier than others. And the other ones are just kind of... Like, it's a very passable album, you know? And like I said, you could see that they've improved over time. Uh, but, f- but for what this is, I think it's a pretty strong offering. I think 3.75 is fair. 4 feels like too much. Um, but I would definitely say this. Anyone who heard 21 Pilots over the past year and a half and they had criticism, thought they were mediocre dreck, uh, listen to this. If you're the kind of guy who was hating on 21 Pilots over the past year and a half, listen to this. Because I, for one, I never hated on them per se, um, but I definitely grew more of an appreciation because I saw how multifaceted this album was. And it was like, wow. Those same guys that put out, you know, these newer ones, they put out this. And I think for the folks who weren't a fan of their hits, they would be a fan of this. Well, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of the Going Off Podcast. Big thanks to this week's sponsor of the show and Michael Castleman for requesting Vessel by 21 Pilots. If there is an album that you would like to request us to review in the Going Off Podcast, it is a one-time $40 pledge to either patreon.com slash muse or patreon.com slash rap critic. And also, if you do want to sponsor the podcast, which just means like you heard on this week's show, if you have a website, a band, anything that you would like to spread help, anything that you would like us to spread the word. Uh, if you have a website, a band, or anything in particular that you would like... Uh, Jesus Christ... If you have a website, a band, or anything in particular that you would like us to help promote for you, spread the signal a little stronger that is a one-time $10 pledge to patreon.com slash muse. And trust me when I say, these Patreon donations you guys are giving our way, even the $1 donations, all this adds up, all of this helps, especially with YouTube deeming our videos inappropriate for advertisers. YouTube is not a viable source of income these days, and Patreon definitely makes up what we're lacking in the ad revenue. So, if you want to help us out in those ways, our links are on the screen if you're watching us on YouTube. If not, I already gave our Patreon links. Uh, If you follow us on Facebook and Twitter, you're bound to see us promoting our Patreon from time to time, so latch on whenever you get a little extra change in your pocket. And until next week, for the Going Off Podcast... I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic, and rest in peace to Heather Hare.